Ratio, tic-tac-toe. Seniors to juniors, don't forget the total. Six to 13, so add it up 19. 380 goes with the total, so you can fish that out to find the seniors. Or you can say 19 times 20 is 380, so six times 20 is 120. Number two, the average of the first three numbers was 80. The average of the next nine numbers was 40. What was the overall average? So here's how I always tell people to do this. If the average of the first three numbers was 80, then let's just assume that the first three numbers are 80. Just do it. 80 plus 80 plus 80. Okay? Because either way, the, if it's an average of 80, it's still going to add up to 240, right? Because 240 divided by 3 is 80. So just assume that it is 80. The first three numbers was 80. The average of the next nine numbers was 40. So then you want nine of these, nine forties. Man, if, the, if only there was an easier way to add the same thing a multiple number of times. All divided by, okay, how many numbers is that? Nine numbers and three numbers, it's 12 numbers. So obviously there is an easy way. Three times 80 plus nine times 40, all divided by 12. 240 plus 360, what is that, 600? So that's 50, which makes sense because 50, and please don't do 80, the average of 80 and 40. A couple of people on the last test did that and don't do that. This is 12 numbers, so you're not going to add two numbers and divide by two. You're going to add 12 numbers and divide by 12. So if you're only given two numbers, you got to come up with 10 more numbers. All right, well, you got to figure that out. All right, and it makes sense it's closer to 50 or closer to 40 because there's way more 40s than there are 80s. All right, so make sure you ish the answer, make sure it makes sense logically. Does that work? Number two, feel good? All right, number three, just translate this, don't math it. What number is N, right? That's how we translate what number is equals 150%. Remember, percents are, are useless in mathematical cal calculations, so let's change it to a decimal. What's one five zero as a decimal? Uh, 1.5. 1.5, 1 .5. so 150%. Everybody okay with that translation? 150%, how do you say of? Times. Times 72, so on your calculator, you can do that. In my head, I'm going 72 plus 36, because that's what one, times 72 is, and then 0. 0.5 of 72 is 36. What's 72 plus 36? 108? Yep. Okay, any questions with that? Does that feel good? Good job. All right, uh, number four. First, we're going to change this to a, a regular inequality, not a negated inequality. This directly translated says X is not greater than four. So if you have like your key here, so what the only thing you're eliminating is this. So that means it could be equal to or it could be less than. There's a symbol for that, less than or equal to four. Okay, so how do we graph that? First, we have to check the domain, right? But to make sure there's not a domain like just integers or just um, positive integers or anything like that. And, and this test is not going to go over what we talked about on Tuesday, so you don't have to worry about that. But it is if there's no domain, then it's real numbers. So how do you do that, Elliot? Circle and fill in. That's right. So you can 
Translate this directly. X, you say shade. And then you say left, because that's an arrow pointing left, right? Shade left and on top of four. So I shaded left and on top of four, okay? Does that make sense? All right, number five. Look at all these 40s. Get out of there. Use substitution to solve the following system of equations for X and Y. So substitution is, remember that cool new wrapper name that Y wants to be called, Y doesn't want to be called Y anymore. Y wants to be called X minus two. So this is what I'm going to plug into this equation, four X plus three Y equals eight. So this guy, if that's what Y wants to be called, I can't say four X plus three Y anymore. I have to say four X plus three X minus two. See how we just rewrote that red equation, but in place of Y, I put his new wrapper name X minus two, okay? So now we just simplify it, right? So we're gonna get rid of parentheses. Now we follow these steps to equations, get rid of the parentheses by distributing the three to the X and the three to the negative two. So four X plus three X, three times negative two is negative six. So 3x minus 6 equals 8. Everybody see that step? All right, second part of this first step is to combine like terms on the same side. This 4x and 3x. What's 4x and 3x? 4x and 3x? That's like 7 x. Seven x, that's right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, now we're going to go. There's not variables on both sides. There's not variables on both sides, but they're, um, so now we go to step three, which is get rid of the constant on the variable side. So how do you get rid of minus six? Add six, six. <clears throat> not eight. There we do one side, do the other. So seven X equals 14. That's nice because now we divide by seven because seven is multiplying by X. So to get rid of seven, you divide by seven x equals 2. So great job. You're almost done, but you're not done because now you have to solve for y. Well, now that you know what x is, you now x doesn't want to be called x anymore. x wants to be called 2. So what's y? 0. y equals 2 now, minus 2, which is 0. So you can just leave it like this. Your answer can be like this. If you wanted to put it like this, like in coordinate form, you can, but if I just see x equals two, y equals zero, you're done. All right, and then just make sure it works. So we know it works in this one, because that's how we got y, right? Y, like zero equals two minus two. But let's plug it in. If x is two, that makes this eight, right? Four times two is eight, plus three times zero, is zero, eight plus zero is eight. It works in that equation too. So as long as it works in both equations, then it's not wrong. So you should, if you're checking your work, you should never get these wrong. Because if it does, if it works in both equations, then you're done. You could even guess, you don't even have to do any of this. You can try to guess what X and Y would be. You could guess what X and Y mean. It's, it's not that hard. Would that take longer? Well, like you could just go through options to see what would work in this because this is easy. Okay, well, X is two bigger than Y, right? So there's a lot of different combinations. There's two and zero, there's three and one, there's four and two, five and three. So you technically could just guess until you get it right. Okay, but this worked out nice because they were nice whole numbers. But a lot of times you're going to get like decimals or fractions, and that is will take you a long time if you just guess on those. So get used to doing it with substitution. Uh, right now, substitution is the main way we do this. We're going to go over more methods on how to solve the system of equations. Okay, so we're going to graph. Number six, we're going to graph this. Y plus 3X equals 2. So... 
I think it's easier to get one of the variables by itself first. Which one looks easy to get by itself? The y or the x? Ilya? The y. Yeah, so let's get rid of this. So y equals, you can say 2 minus 3x, leave it like that. We're going to start doing it a different way. When we start graphing it another way, we're going to put the negative 3x first. So it'll say negative 3x plus 2. But for now, let's just plug it in. Pick an x, any x. What's the easiest x to pick? Oh, no. Wait, no. Zero. Easier than that, zero. zero. Okay, if x is 0, 2 minus, what's 3 times 0? Zero. So y equals 2 minus 0 when x is 0. So it's just 2, right? Yeah. The next easiest one to pick, Selah? 1. 1. So what's 2 minus, what's 3 times 1? 3. What's 2 minus 3? Negative 1. Negative 1. Okay, let's pick 2. Yeah. 2 minus 6 is negative 4. That's going the other way. I mean, you can pick a negative number if you want. If 2 minus negative 3, what's 2 minus negative 3? Uh, 5. Yep, so it's 2 plus 5. So then you just graph these. Make sure it makes a straight line. 0, 2 is right there. 1, negative 1 is right there. 2, negative 4 is right there. And negative 1, 5 is right there. Does that form a straight line? Looks like it. We are going to learn a shortcut on how to graph this at a later time. But really, and I'll just show you real quick, it, when y is by itself, it reveals some secrets. It reveals where the line is going to cross the y-axis. See this 2 here, the constant? If the line crosses right at 2. And this is what we call a slope. Negative 3 slope is rise over run. So this is down three over one. So down three over one, down three over one, down three over one. So that's the shortcut that we're gonna learn uh, next week. But for now, just plug in some points that make it work. You didn't have to do this. You could have picked, you could have picked your X's and Y's here. It's just harder to figure out what's what. I mean, it's not too hard. If X is zero, then that's still two. If X is one. So what plus 3 equals 2? Well, negative 1. So you can still do it like this. You don't have to get y by itself. But start getting used to getting y by itself because that makes it easier to graph with our shortcut. All right, number 7. Use unimultipliers to convert 100 cubic centimeters to uh, cubic feet. Okay, here's how we do this. So this is going to be... Uh, nine unimultipliers. Whoa. Okay. So first of all, how do I get rid of the cubic? How do I get rid of centimeters? I'm going from centimeters inches to feet, right? We got to get to inches first. So what do we do? Yeah, Kiara. Uh, 100 centimeters over a meter. No, 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 no. One meter over 100 centimeters. No, no, no. Two point. Two four five at the bottom. Yeah, Elliot. You said nine. It's only six. Huh? It's only six unit multipliers. You said nine. Oh, is it just two places that we're going? From we're going to feet. Is it we're going to feet? Okay. Yeah. So we got to get to inches first. To get from centimeter to inches in the normal world, yeah. it's just one inch over. What was it, Sela? Two point four five. 2.54. It was five, it is five? Yeah. Okay, it's 2.54 centimeters in an inch. This is the hardest one to remember, but um, you won't, you'll, you won't forget, right? Okay, but this only gets rid of one of these exponents. So remember, this is centimeter, centimeter, centimeters. So that's why I'm doing three. So it's three of the same unit multiplier. Remember, uh, put it on the bottom because you're going to bury your past, right? Leave the past behind. You're going to bury the past. Uh, what's on top is where you're headed. So you're going to inch land. Now we got to get from inches to feet. So we're going to bury our past. We got to get rid of three inches labels. So we need three unit multipliers 
I have inches in it. We're going to feet, right? So one foot, 12 inches. It's not 12 feet over one inch, right? There's not 12 feet in one inch. There's 12 inches in one foot. Okay, so now you're left with this answer. 100 times one times one times one, so nothing, right? Times foot, foot, foot. So you got cubic feet all over 2.54 times itself three times. So I'm gonna put 2.54 with an exponent there times 12, same thing, three of those multiply. So you could leave your answer like that if you wanted to, totally fine with that, or you could do that on a calculator and figure it out. Did anyone do that? I did, but I did 2.45, so yeah. that would be the same. I did, but it's not fun. Okay, that's fine. But you can leave it like that, all right? Because your calculator, um, make sure you show your work too, because if for some reason, you did it, entered it wrong on a calculator, I still have the right answer on your paper. Okay, so show all your work. It's good insurance. Mr. Fly. Yep. Are you being distracted outside? What's going on? Kind of. No, I'm being, I'm being distracted like in my mind. So like, we can't have, is uh, that water? It's a latte. You can't have a latte in here. You can't have anything except water in our classrooms or else I get in trouble. You don't want me to get in trouble, do you? If I had it? If you put it in a thing like that, then I'll never know it's not water. I, I didn't anything. say it. You didn't hear me say that. <laughs> okay? Hey, look at that little water bottle there. Oh. That's not Elliot's. I don't know whose that is. It's whoever sent you the one. Uh, what was your question? Sorry, I cut you off because no, I was distracted by your latte. Uh, <laughs> if I bring you a Starbucks, like your Starbucks drink a little bit later, would you excuse this right now? A little bit later? Yeah, like not today, but like. Yeah, I mean, well, I am I am excusing it now. This is your, like your warning. So yes, bring me a Starbucks. And here's the beauty, guys. I can drink coffee, but you can't. <laughs> this is what adulting looks like, okay? It's not that I'm better than you. I'm just older than you. <laughs> I'm not going to say more responsible, but I'm just, yeah. Because I, I have to pay for it if I like spill my coffee. If you spill your latte, you don't have to pay for it. I mean, I think I still have to pay for it. Because you're a child. No, I think I still have to pay for it. Okay, <laughs> that's where. Um, were you, uh, do you go to the youth, are you part of this youth group here? No. Okay. Well, because my room, there's ducks everywhere. So last night, there were some happenings. In the youth group here. Anyway, let's let's move on. Solve for y. So we just need to get y by itself on one side of the equation. So let's write it all out. So we have to get rid of everything else except y on one side of the equation. So we can follow these same steps. First step is to look for parentheses and there's no parentheses. Are there like terms? No, there's a y and an x and a constant. There's a y and an x. There's no like terms, right? So step two, if you have variables on both sides. Now here's the variables that we're concerned about are the y's. So if you have y's on both sides, get rid of the smaller y term. Which one's the smaller y term? This guy, because it's negative, right? So we're gonna add four y to both sides. So we're left with x minus 3 here equals 7y minus 3x. So far, so good. Do you see what I did? Okay, next step, get rid of the constant on the variable side. Well, in this case, the constant is anything except the variable that you want to get by itself. So how do you get rid of minus 3x? You add 3x. Add 3x. And look, there's already an x over here. So this is 4x minus 3 equals 7y. Now, how do you get rid of that seven? Minus. Not subtract. Oh, or minus, which is not a verb. Divide. divide. You're dividing by, what was that, a division symbol? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna divide by seven, and if you divide, you have to divide this whole side by seven. 
What? Okay, look at this. So you get y equals, what's 4x over 7? Just 4x over 7. And then minus 3 over 7 is just 3 over 7. Oh. That's, that's all you have to do. That's, you're done at that point. Okay? Does that feel okay? This doesn't feel like we did any math. We just kind of rearranged our messy room. Because this doesn't look any cleaner than, I mean, it looks a little bit more compact, but not much. Okay? There is a value of getting that y by itself. Like I said, when we start doing more linear equations, uh, you're going to see the value in that. Okay. Let's do number nine. Because that comes after eight. Okay, so I'm gonna not I'm not gonna write down the sets. Can you see the sets? Is this statement true? Five, this symbol B. What does that mean in English? Five is an element of B. Is five in the set B? No. No, so this is false. What about this statement? Four and then this symbol A. What does that mean in English? Four is not in the set A. Is four not in the set A? Is that true? true? That is true. So this is where your dyslexic, dysgraphic mind has to adjust. This is where I, okay, if I say this out loud, am I going to get in trouble by my mom? Okay, because I just lied. Four is not in A, I promise. Oh, that's true. You told the truth. Okay, I have to, I have to literally do that because... I have a dyslexic brain. Okay, um, next. Two is an element of C. Is that true or false? Yeah, I see two in there. True. And the last one, seven is not in the set B. Is that true or false? False. That's false because it is in there. It's wrong to say that. It's wrong. This is exactly the type of thing that I don't find hard. But I always worry I'm going to get wrong. Yeah, because you... It's, it's just the thing that's really easy to get wrong, but I don't. Yeah. It's, uh... It's because your mind is cor correcting yourself, but you're correcting your correction. That's, you know? So, it's, it's kind of weird. Like, when, uh... When I was teaching my daughter subtraction, um, she was like, okay, you have nine ducks and you take two away, how many do you have left? And so she was thinking, okay, so seven, um, if you have seven ducks and like you take two away from nine, so not so nine <laughs> so she always she she knows the answer right away but then she reverses it and it's just a weird uh, she she knows how to subtract now she's 21 so but um yeah she's come a long way all right number 10. okay this is a this is a lot like the question on the, the real test and it looks like the two have similar di uh, denominators but they're not they're completely different so that b it has nothing to do with that other b i mean it's the same b it's the same value but it's not like b times something so these are completely different so here's what you got to do so i'm going to write the problem out like this so this has to look like this you can't just subtract c here right that's not how you build common or equivalent fractions it's either multiply or divide to make equivalent fractions. You can't just add or subtract. So this needs this whole thing, and this needs this whole thing. What does this need? B. This just needs a B, okay? See how I made the denominators look the same? This is what the real test is gonna look like. It's gonna be like an X and an X plus Y or something like that, okay? So don't stress about it, just squish it all together, all right? Okay. So now I, I, I have the same denominator, so B times two, what's a better way to say that? B. Two B, and then look, I can distribute that 
plus 5b minus 5c all over, you can just leave this the same. You don't have to go b squared minus bc. Are you done? No, because look, you've got like terms there. So that's just 7b. So your final answer, 7b minus 5c all over b times b minus c. Okay? So multiply it all out, like get rid of the parentheses on the top, just in case you end up with some like terms. But if you don't end up with like terms, then you probably don't have to multiply out those parentheses. Okay, number 11. Copy dot flop. All right, a over x, copy dot flop dot n minus n over one. See what I did? That's a division problem. This is called a complex fraction. It doesn't look very, it's just a division problem, okay? So we have a fraction divided by a fraction. Now we just multiply across, look at this. A times M minus N all over X. You're done. So I'm not gonna distribute that out because I don't need to. I mean, you can if you want, I'm not gonna mark it wrong. But I, I mean, I would do that if I knew I could combine any like terms, but AM does not combine with AN. So you can leave it like that or you can multiply it out if you want. Either way, I'll take it, okay? Copy dot flop, multiply across, that's it. Number 12. Okay, so we're just adding like terms here. Negative three X cubed, let me just write it out. Minus four X squared plus three X plus three. And when you add a parenthesis, when you add a parenthesis, you can ignore the parenthesis. Just ignore it. Six X cubed plus seven X squared minus six. So you can see how I just ignored the parentheses? I don't need, that's just confusing. Now, if I was subtracting that parentheses, that's different, right? Because you have to subtract everything in the parentheses. But if you're just adding it, you can just ignore it. So now you just have to combine like terms. Look, here's some X cubes. What do those combine to? Negative three of those plus six of those. Three of those. Now let's, uh, Combine our x squareds, what do those combine to? It's also three, right? Negative four and seven is three. Okay, and then it looks like just these left. So minus three, but you still need to conclude that one three x. Look at all these threes. Does that make sense? All it is is combining like terms. So like terms have to have the same exponent, same variable with the same exponent. Okay, good? That's all you can do, you can't go any farther. 13, uh, multiply, okay, so this, remember that little two? Three X minus three squared means three X minus three times itself. Just like five squared means five times itself, five times five. 3x minus 3 parentheses squared means 3x minus 3 times 3x minus 3. Okay? Now, if you're writing this out, put these letters. F-O-I-L. First times the first is what? What's 3x times 3x? 9x squared. 9x squared. Don't forget that squared. This is a lot of students made that mistake last year on this very test okay don't forget it's 3x times 3x is not 9x you're kind of used to that because you're just combining like terms you don't touch the variables but when you're multiplying you have to touch the variables okay and then you got the outside term what's 3x times negative 3 so negative 9x and then you got the inside term what's negative 3 times 3x another negative 9x or minus 9x. And then you got the last negative three times negative three is a positive nine. All right? So then 
since I multiplied everything out, I looked for like terms. Which ones are like terms? Kiara? Oh, negative nine x negative Yeah. So if you do it in this order, F O I L, then the middle terms will always be what you're going to combine, if you're going to combine anything. Sometimes if it's completely different letters, you won't combine anything. But if you're going to combine stuff and you, and you follow this order, then they, it will always be the two middle terms, okay? So now, what is this? 9x squared, what does this combine to? Negative 18x. Not negative 18x squared, because now you're back to addition and subtraction. You're combining like terms. You don't touch the variables. It's like a common denominator in a fraction. You don't touch that. All right, that's it. That's your answer. There is a shortcut when you um, combine, when you, when you uh, basically multiply a binomial that this two terms by itself, when you square a binomial, here's the shortcut. This squared, and then multiply these two together, and then times two. So negative nine X times two is negative 18 X. And then this squared. Negative three times negative three is positive nine. That's the shortcut, but foil it out just to be safe, okay? All right, number 14. All right, this is really not that difficult. All you do, and you can write this down, is multiply the exponent on the outside. It's kind of like you're distributing that exponent to all the exponents inside. So when you have a power raised to a power, you multiply the exponents. So x to the third, a to the, or z to the fourth, all to the negative three. So this negative three, you're gonna multiply. So write that down on your test. Multiply exponents. So you get five to the zero still, a to the positive nine, x to the negative nine, z to the negative 12. You see what I did? I just multiplied those exponents. And then what's the one more thing I could do? What does it say? Write the with variables in the denominator. Okay, well, we have to put everything downstairs, I guess. But the other thing we could do is what's five to the zero? Just one, right? Anything to the zero power is one. So you probably could have started with that and ignored it instead of having to waste your time doing that. But if you put everything downstairs, you have to have something on the bottom, on the top. So now this is a to the negative nine, x to the positive nine, z to the positive 12. When you put everything downstairs, you have to negate the exponents. You have to change the sign of the exponents. That's it. I don't know why they wanted you to do that, but um, usually that's a strange request, but you have to do what they ask, right? Write all the variables in the denominator. We did. Okay, same thing with B. All you're doing is multiplying that exponent. So I'm going to do that right away. I'm not going to copy down the problem. So 2 to the 0 times negative 2 is still 0. And then x to the, what's the exponent on the x there? What's the exponent of the x on B there? What do you got, Elliot? One. One. So what's one times negative two? Negative two. And then y to the, what's that new y exponent going to be? What's the new y exponent going to be? Two. Positive two. That's right. All over, let's do the same thing in the bottom. The negative two times the negative two, you have z to the positive four. So far, so good. You see what I did? All I did was multiply those exponents. All right, now I need to just put these downstairs. That's it, and you're done. So this is going to stay up top. So we got a 1 up top, and then we got x to the positive 2, y to the negative 2, and then z stays put. So you don't want to change the z exponent, right, because it's already downstairs. So leave that alone. I just changed this exponent and this exponent. Does that feel all right? I feel like you guys understand these types of problems. Okay, number 15. Ugh, that looks difficult. 
so many parentheses and absolute value symbols. Scares me that you said that was your mother. Scares you? Yeah, because like you're really good at that. Well, it's just so like sketchy because there's so many things that you can screw up here. Exactly. That's why I think that for mental health, we should exempt those problems. Yeah. <laughs> mental abuse mm -hmm. to humans. Mainly just those problems, like like the other problems, like those are acceptable, but the really long ones, yeah, like like when are you gonna use that in real life? Also, can I just point out <laughs> problems like this one? I have more trouble copying it down. Than I, I know math. you like your mistake is gonna be when you copy it down. Mm -hmm. So make sure you show all your work, because then if I see that you copied it down wrong, then I'll, I'll give you some grace there. Um. Okay, so let's just go in the innermost parentheses first. Uh, well, we can't really do much there, but we can, let's, let's, let's fix this. What's the absolute value of negative two? Those. Two, but then you have a negative sign in front of that, so this does end up being negative two. Okay, now we can't do parentheses, but we can distribute our parentheses, right? Um, so right here, like these parentheses, you don't really need these. So because you could, uh, you're just subtracting a 6x from an x. So I'm going to keep that the same, but then I'm going to, I'm just going to combine those. What's x minus 6x? Six. Wait, what did yeah. Okay. So everybody okay with that? That's what I did on the right side. On the left side, I've got my own order going. <laughs> So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute that, and then I guess I could do that at the same time. Everybody okay with that? That's not breaking any order of operations rules. So let's see, negative 2, I'm still going to keep this big bracket here. Negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x minus 4 equals, now I'm going to distribute this negative sign. Everybody okay with that? So this negative distributed to negative two becomes a positive two. This negative distributed to a negative five X becomes a positive five X. Everybody okay with that? See what I did? I just oppositized everything inside here. So instead of negative two minus five X, it's positive two plus five X. All right, now I'm gonna do the same thing here, um, but I'm also gonna realize, hey, this is six minus four, right? This is six minus four. So this is two minus two X. Everybody okay with what I just did? Because six minus four, I can combine those to two. And then I negate those. So I get negative two plus two X equals two plus five X. Okay, now I'm here. That's step two, where I have variables on both sides. So I get rid of the smaller variable term. Which one's smaller? Two X or five X? Two X, so get rid of two X on both sides. So then I move up here, negative two equals two plus three X. And then get rid of the, the constant term on the variable side. So I'm gonna get rid of this two, which is being added to three X. So subtract two, subtract two, three X does not equal zero. Negative two minus another two is negative four. So then I've got a really annoying answer. Divide both sides by three. So X equals negative four thirds. Wait, why divide it by three? Isn't that a three there? Oh, wait. Sorry. It looks like a seven, but it's a It was a messy, messy three. Okay. It was, was writing so at an angle. Okay. So that's disappointing because you kind of wanted like a nice number, something to be divided evenly or whatever, but it is what it is. Okay, you guys ready for five more? We're 75% done with the test. Let's do this. Um, that 17 is really our most annoying one that we're gonna do. Actually, 18 looks pretty annoying too. 
Let's look at 17. Here we go. All right, let's look at 16 first. Because 16 comes before 17. So we're going to factor what goes into both of those terms on top. A 3, what else? M to the fourth, right? Mm -hmm. N, just N, because remember you're looking for the smallest exponent of each letter, and then T squared. So M to the fourth, N, and then T squared. And when you take that out, you're left with uh, one, uh, yeah, one minus four, because three goes into 12 four times, T squares cancel, and we need another M. Is that a T? Is it a T? I it was an L. Oh, it is an L. Whatever. Okay, and then you're all over. Let's write this in alphabetical order, because we can. M to the fourth, N, L squared. Look what cancels now. So remember, please do not cancel those right there and then say negative 12 because you're dividing both of those by that so your final answer is should be this unless we did something wrong what oh oh i see what you did never mind i just put it wrote it in alphabetical order so it's easier to uh see that they're the same so you can cancel them if they're the same but you can't cancel those two there because division is not the opposite of subtraction or addition, right? So you, but when I multiply this by something and then divide by that same thing, I can cancel it. Okay. 17, here we go. I'm just gonna squish everything together. This is a fraction being distributed to those two fractions. So I'm just gonna squish the numerators and the denominators together one at a time so this ends up being x squared, y to the zero, z squished with z to the negative fourth, a to the negative two. Okay, all over, squish the denominators together, a to the negative two, z. Do you see what I did? Do you see that? I just squished those first two fractions together. Now I'm going to multiply that fraction on the outside times the second fraction. So I'm going to squish all those together. So this is x squared, same thing, x squared, y to the 0, z, squished with the numerator a to the 0, z squared, all over a to the negative 2, uh, x to the negative 2, a to the 2. Okay, I didn't do any math. All I did was squish everything together. Okay, so now we get, I'm gonna simplify. So here's what I would suggest doing. So instead of trying to simplify the top first or whatever, just bring everything upstairs right away. A squared Z to the negative one. You see what I did? I brought this A to the negative two up and it became A to the positive two. I brought this Z to the one up and it became Z to the negative one. So do the same thing here, bring all that up a two x two a negative two now you can ignore these denominators and just add the exponents of the bases so let's start with a because a comes first right a to the yes a to the add the exponents let's see negative two plus two what's negative two plus two uh, a zero a to the zero is just one right so we'll we'll uh, ignore that now uh what comes next x x to the what's two plus nothing i guess just two y to the zero plus nothing so that gets canceled as well now look at our z's we got a one plus negative four plus negative one so these guys kind of cancel each other out and you're left with z to the negative four Minus, all right, let's do the same thing in here. A is zero, it's two plus negative two. All these A's cancel out, so there's no A's. Um, X is X squared times X squared is X to the fourth. Remember, you add the exponents. Y, there's no other Y, so that cancels out. 
and then z to the 1 plus 2 is 3. So here's what I'm left with. x squared, z to the negative fourth, minus x to the fourth, z to the third. Lots of detail here. Now it says write the answer with all positive exponents. So this is, this is my only rule breaker. So how do I turn that into a positive exponent? Put it downstairs. Send them downstairs to be punished in the dungeon. And then everything's okay over here, so just leave it alone. Don't touch it. Don't ruin a good thing. There's your final answer. Okay, that was 17. Let's do 18. Which, I'm not going to lie to you, 18 looks a little annoying. Okay, 18, here we go. Uh, all right, well, let's just plug in our values right away. So one over negative, okay, x is cube root of 27. Well, what's the cube root of 27? Three. Three, so I'm gonna put negative <laughs> three, the negative four, okay, plus um, absolute value of negative three squared times uh, negative three squared, <laughs> same kind of thing, but not an absolute value, minus the cube root of y. What's y? What's y? Y equals, wait, y, wait, y minus five equals 59. So what's y? Y is, is, yeah. 64. Did you, you just, you just took that away from her. She was working so hard, stuttering through life, and you just took it away from her. You took away my struggles. <laughs> okay, so we can do this. First of all, um, what do you do with negative exponents again? You, um, you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You put them up top, right? Yeah. So this one goes up top with a three to the fourth on top, but then a negative sign on bottom. So I'm gonna put a negative one. If you bring every, if, if just a negative sign is on the bottom, just put negative one on the bottom. Okay, minus, all right, well, what's this gonna be? <laughs> That's three squared, which is nine, but it's negative, it's not negative three squared, it's negative three squared. So negative nine, but it's still going to be nine, isn't it? Because it's the absolute value of negative nine times, what is this? Negative nine or positive nine? Elliot? Negative nine, because it's not negative three squared, it's negative three squared. So negative nine minus, what's the cube root of 64? Four. All right, so this is gonna be 81 over negative one. What's 81 divided by negative one? Negative 81 plus negative 81 minus four. So that's negative 162 minus four, which is negative 166. Boy, and then I think, did I do that wrong because because, you know, it would have been nice if those would have canceled out. You know what I mean? Like a negative 81 and a negative 81. But no, it's right. Okay? Number 19. Two more. We got this. Okay, so negative 16 times 1 over negative 4 parentheses squared. Do you see why I did 1 over negative 4 parentheses squared? Because it's negative 4 to the negative 2, so that goes on the bottom. Minus uh, 9 times 1 over negative 3 squared. So that's a negative x1, so I just put it on the bottom. All over 3 squared minus ab uh, just this. I'm just going to do this. Is that okay? There's four negative signs. So I'm going to say plus 14. Everybody okay with me just doing that? <laughs> Oh, it's an absolute value. There's three negative signs, so it's minus 14. 
So that's 7 times negative 2 is negative 14. Negative negative 14 is positive 14, so minus 14. So you got 9 minus 14 on the bottom. So let's do this. Negative 16 times 1 over 16, because it's negative 4 parentheses squared. So this is negative 1 minus, this is 9 times 1 over 9. That's positive 9. So that's minus 1 all over 9 minus 14, which is negative 5. So this is negative 2 over negative 5, which is just 2 fifths when you cancel out the negatives. Okay, we got one more. Surface area. You got the triangles. You got two of those. You got two of the rectangles, but the 10 by 20 rectangles times two. And you've got the bottom, which is 16 by 20 rectangle. Okay, so you can do that. What is that? 16 by six, there's two of those. So this is 48 times two is 96 plus 200, two of those is 400. And then two of these, that's 320, or one of those, 320. So that's 720 plus 96. What's 720 plus 96? 800. Uh, 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 16. Is that right? 816. 816 square centimeters. That's it.